Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nowhere, but I was nowhere. So we um, have been looking and dialoguing and break down, um, assessing, you know, the uh, proper handling of people. And in chapter five, we came into a chapter that started to deal with some of the four basic problems that probably outline or at least um, sets the parameters of some of our difficulty factors. And within these parameters, you know, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said that these are some of the four basic problems that really affect us, you know, directly, uh, meaning you, uh, as a byproduct then maybe your family and then as an extension of that then it comes into the community you know begins to affect us and last Thursday we dealt with health and we started to break that down and look at health as far as uh, why is it one of the four basic problems of it um, you know identifying these health issues and then also talking about how to rectify these particular health issues also. So in conjunction with that, um, we actually got out of here about 10 o'clock and we could have kept moving on from there, uh, but I had to shed it down to keep us in some type of structure in regards to that. Because it, yeah, oh, <laughs> I, you know, yeah. And, and Sister Kalila, yeah, them two was rolling with, with, with that topic in regards to that. And little Rob jumped in over here and was adding his two cents and it was a very healthy dialogue and one of the things at the end uh, I would have suggested and probably should have is making sure that we have uh, information in front of us and one of the best informations about critiquing, critiquing health is um, how to eat to live one of the best books that you can read and there's other publications that have a higher truth in it also we should not ignore that that's right you know the minister and the messenger you know never taught us to ignore that uh in regards to you know finding you know the highest truth within information knowledge and wisdom so you know we never want to do that so if we uh, have a chance i believe the um I believe that particular book is online. So, you know, as you were saying, going online now is a big thing. Hey, you can find that particular publication, How to Eat to Live, right online. Yeah. You know, maybe reviewing it if we've read it or skimmed over it, maybe taking another look at it, especially in the way that they're uh, poisoning, really poisoning us. You know, I was going to be careful, but really <laughs> poisoning us is a slower type of death. And they're uh, enticing us based upon our palates and our taste buds, things of that sort. So we have to have the discipline to be able to break that behavior. You know, uh, I know none of you all have, you know, none, no uh, disciplines that you have to overcome. But you know, right. I'll be the first one to pull that back up, you know, and read that. <laughs> um, so as moving forward, looking at some of the four basic problems, which are the cornerstones. Um, for some of our uh, obstacles that we need to overcome. The next one that the messenger wanted to point out is finances. And the financial aspect, especially dealing with the life and the reality of the black men and black women, people of color. And then the minister, if you notice, he's going to poor whites. He's yeah. dealing with them today. You know what I mean? He's dealing with them. If poor whites are are suffering from the appetite of the wealthy, of the political, those that hold the power to where it even trickles down and they getting it too. So there's an anger within them. Yes, sir. Uh, if you take a look at the militias yes, that they have out here, I mean, they're gunning up. I mean, they got guns galore. They buying them off the shelves like crazy. So, mm -hmm. you know, they're anticipating some type of uh, conflict, you know, because they've had enough on their end as far as what they consider. Yes, so, you know, right now, taking a look at finances, um, I want to just try and have a uh, an exchange and a dialogue to see how do these particular... Oh, thank you so much. You gave me a little extra? Okay, thank you so much. You know, how can 
uh, and why does these finances you know affect us uh, in such a very uh, damaging way and then turn it and see what are some of the solutions so you have to look at the problems but we also have to have a solution uh, too many times we identify problems but we don't have any solutions then to you know move it out the way it's planted in regards to that yes, sir. so uh, taking a look at the four basic problems dealing with finance uh, let me at least pull a little bit of, uh, of data or actual facts and this is just based upon statistics um, and then we'll kind of open it up and really start to break down how does finance impact us directly and then family wise and then community wise and then look at some of that one of the things when I looked at uh, finance or looked at wealth something that was pointed out here that was you know when you look at it in this particular aspect it's really um, disheartening maybe I can I can use that because it said in 2010 the median wealth in black household now this is across the United States meaning if you take New York to California and everything in between that means you know Californians may be thinking they live in a certain way and New Yorkers think they live in a certain way uh, but our brothers and sisters uh, throughout the south and the midwest that still may not have the uh, equity opportunities that afford us they just took a total amount of that and they said the medium wealth of blacks in their household in 2010 was sixteen thousand and sixty dollars sixteen thousand six hundred dollars that was in 2010 yes sir in 2013 which they didn't have a 15 now it dropped down and it fell 33.7 percent to eleven thousand so you have across the board black people people of color surviving across the board with no more than eleven thousand dollars eleven thousand dollars per year yes, as sir. the medium household yes sir brother teddy uh it's also important when reading that statistic to understand that the median is not the average mm -hmm. You know, it's one number one, number two, mm -hmm. then you got nine and ten, and the middle number is seven. That's the median, mm -hmm. seven. Yes. You know what I mean? So it's not even that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's just the number that was in the middle yes, of sir. the lowest numbers and the highest numbers. Wow. It's not the average. You know what I mean? Thank you so, so much. So uh, yeah, it's important to understand that eleven thousand dollars is probably a high. I mean, even to myself, I say that's a high mm -hmm. estimate. Uh, yes, yeah, so you know, when you take the collective. When you take the collective into account, you know. Yes, yes. So I just want to kind of, you know, based off of that and then based off of our own life experience, you know, what are some of the problems, since these are the four basic cornerstones that gives us, create obstacles, what are some of the problems that originate out of having a lack of finances? And I want to start with our sister, if that's okay, you know, talk, start with the sister's fronts. So, Sister Kimberly, what are some of the problems that arise from, you know, not having the proper financial stability to be able to maintain self, i.e. extends to family, i.e. then further extends to community? How does finances affect you? And what problems do they then create or multiply? I'm sorry to speak on, uh, yeah. on an average of what I've seen. Can you repeat the question again? Yes, ma'am. How does the finances or lack of finances um, create one of these basic four problems? You know, there's a cornerstone that the messenger was identifying, finances being one. So how does having a lack of those finances, because first you act personally, then family, then it affects your community, uh, so, how does it affect you personally, if you can share, or, you know, what has you gauged uh, lack of finances does uh, and affects us in our community? Okay, well, because uh, that, it could be so broad, so I was just trying to get an idea of where to start at. Yes, ma'am. Within the four basic problems, yes, finances can cause a... a an eruption regarding all the other three. Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, because ma that. if you start out and you have nothing mm -hmm. and you're wondering how you're going to get 
the health care you need. Sure. Okay. Um, as far as domestic affairs, I, you know, I can think a job, place to live, mm -hmm. how to get there. You have no money. It, it's going to be extremely hard right. to do what needs to be done. And then, lastly, okay. affairs of the heart. You could turn on the television at any time, and I'm a criminal justice major, so I've always been honed in on criminal justice shows. So you could turn on any of the judge shows, mm -hmm. and at least one out, one or two of the cases within that segment of time mm -hmm. have to do with a divorce or people who are cohabitating together and no longer get along mm -hmm. and money is always the root of it yes mm -hmm. so um you know not all these shows they have like the have and have nots i've never watched it but when i think of that i think back to when my grandparents used to talk about that the have and the have nots where black folks were the have nots and the haves were the jewish people right. the white people and they worked as hard as they could to obtain just a snippet of what the haves acquired, but they knew because of where they were at in the world and how the world treated them, they would not get that. Mm -hmm. But they strived to. You know, that was what was in their... Uh, <coughs> I was in their hearts, okay. you know, they, they wanted to do better for their families, they wanted to do better than what had been given or yes, um, shown to them. Right, right. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Brother Steve, good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Good to see everyone. Yes, sir. So, um, finances, economics, resources, you know, all those particular things uh, that drive sometimes the desire of a person pro or con you know mm -hmm. they try to get those resources get them chips mm -hmm. you know what I mean mm -hmm. you know son son of York yes New York daddy you know okay um, how does the fact that out of that corner stone a corner stone of these four basic problems how does finance affect us what does it create because it can affect us in a couple of different ways and I have it here you know affect us um, but the Kenyatta's not wearing the same thing that he normally would wear but then there's another effect of lack of resources may create also so when we have a lack of finances equity and and uh, prosperity how does that affect us you know as quote unquote so called American Negro we're original people but that's how they framed us how does that affect us, sir? Well, to start off, like the sister brought out, um, the lack of or an abundance of finance can impact a person or a group of people on so many levels. Okay. Um, and I think, uh, like in, in this country, I mean, you don't have a bartering system mm -hmm. where you can just straight up, you know, barter a skill for. Uh, um, like some sort of asset, like food or anything. Right. Everything is, uh, our exchange, our medium of exchange is money. Mm -hmm. And with that, you know, um, you know, it, it affords you educational opportunities, okay. you know, beyond grade school. So, you know, in order to take a trade, if you don't have a scholarship, um, you need money to finance education. And then <clears throat> you need money as a means to acquire wealth to pass on to the next generation, as Brother Scott is always talking about the importance yes, of sir, being yeah. financially astute mm -hmm. and, you know, amassing enough, you know, to retire on and then leave assets to your children, yes, you sir. know, and that's, <clears throat> and then from there, once you build up, you know, uh, wealth on a family level, then, you know, you open up businesses and everything and then you amass, acquire wealth on a community level, okay. you know, on a tribal level. Yeah, I like you in that. Uh, <laughs> also, uh, to the more mundane, <coughs> so that's 
So I guess that's important. Generational wealth, okay. you know, or community wealth, mm-hmm. you know, um, is realized through, uh, you know, finan- uh, accumulating finances or money, whatever. Mm-hmm. But on the more mundane, you know, we kind of live in a materialistic, you know, society, and it's important to look good, you know, <laughs> right, dress yeah. nicely, right. you know, uh, have a nice car, okay. or else you're not going to get you know, that female, I guess the pressure is more, at least from my perspective, a little more on a man to have wealth, you know, look nice and have all these things, gotcha. you know, uh, but that's also important, you know, I know uh, brothers might feel like, you know, they, they don't have enough wealth, they can't get the nice ride, or they can't get the nice clothes, yeah. and then they can't get the nice female, mm-hmm. and then they're worthless, right. you know, <laughs> right, 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 talking jump to that, <laughs> right, right. You know, <laughs> so I mean, yeah, onto the mundane. I mean, it might be mundane when you look at it overall in comparison to how important it is from a, a community level. But personally, that's important to a lot of people. Okay. You know, so I mean, that's my input on it. Well, affairs of the heart. You know, and we'll um, get to those. Yeah, because each one has its own exactly. You know, its own component. Yes, ma'am. We'll get to those. Yep. But most definitely finance. Is one of these mountains that we've been trying to climb since we've gotten here. Yes, and I don't know what's on the side of that mountain, if it's quicksand or an oil slick, but we've tried everything possible to get up that mountain up that hill. And the messenger and the minister told us that our unity That's is right. more powerful than an atomic bomb. Yes, sir. That's where... Um, we can find our wealth and we can get up that hill and finally grab some traction because as individuals you're just one ant climbing up that hill mm-hmm. with a whole lot of I don't know what is the ants um, the swarm of wild colony you, know, you know what I mean yeah. you, know, you know that ant has to get around all types of other obstacles trying to chew him up on up going up that but when you see them red ants marching in unity Man, they'll move, remove a whole lot of things about their path. Yes, so it's our unity that allows us to get up that hill that um, Brother Steve is talking to in a collective manner. And we're more powerful doing it in that moment. So most definitely, I did uh, take down and thank you, Brother Steve, for that feedback. Um, Brother Teddy, you know, yes, we're, we're, we're dealing with finances. We're dealing with the here and now. I want it now. I don't want to wait till tomorrow. Planning, yeah. planning for what? Yeah. You know, how does the fact that, you know, how does finances affect us personally? Because sometimes it's our testimony that frees somebody else. That's you right. know, and then how does it extend out when we have one of these financial episodes? As our sister was saying. Um, I, I, uh, I definitely agree with uh, what Brother Steve said. And um, I think Sister Kim also everyone knows mm-hmm. with how especially with how finances affects all the other three <laughs> mm. you know and uh, in truth you know you're in this society that we live in this world we live in um, our finances are the foundation for living it's food clothing and shelter mm. the only way for us to acquire that bare minimal that those just those basic necessities is to have finances, you know? And uh, when you look at the income ratios, or not ratios, but the, the statistics about how many people make a certain amount, when you start breaking into that six-figure income, you're only looking at about, at about 10% of the population or less hmm. making that. So the other 90, is up under that six figure income. Right. You know, and then it drastically jumps down as you get closer to the to the larger portions of the percentages. Um, and with that being said, you know, when you have people who are living paycheck to paycheck, which the vast majority of the entire population is, you know, you you basically created a ceiling for that person. Mm. You know, I can't I can't even think about or comprehend getting, you know, a car if I don't got a, a crib yet, if I don't got a place to stay, mm-hmm. and if I don't got a, a roof over my head that's mine, mm-hmm. I'm not even 
hard, man. You're crazy. <laughs> you know, I can't even. That's not even something I can entertain. Or once I get a, a, a place to stay in a car, you know, I'm not even thinking about uh, acquiring maybe a cell phone, like a smartphone or something like that, and and or a computer or a big screen or anything like that. You know, these things start to be uh, out of reach for us. And you know, the longer that you have somebody at the same level, the more dissatisfied they become. Mm. And the more dissatisfied they become, the more desperate they become. And if you don't, if you don't give them the creative resources to pull finances from other places mm. and create a create more revenue streams for them to build on top of their little kingdom that they got, you know, they may look into other devious ways, nefarious ways. Yes. You know, because that's all they really is seeing. You know, that's the only thing that makes sense to them. Um, and so, you know, finances is definitely, if you don't understand it, if you don't uh, comprehend how it works or how economics works, it can definitely make you crazy. That's what I'm like, bro. Uh, it could definitely drive you down a path that you may have tried to steer away from your whole life and right. really put as much energy as possible into doing so. Yeah. Um, you know, and then it's also important to realize that everything that needs to get done in the world can happen without money. It doesn't it doesn't need to be there. You know, you're not wearing money. We're not eating money. We're not living in and <laughs> under money. You know what I mean? It it was all here before money was ever here. You know, so it's really important to understand that concept. And then when you figure out that, you know, money is just the the incentive for people to do what they do, it sh it shifts the whole power of money. Mm -hmm. You stop thinking about money being, you know, the, the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. Mm -hmm. And when you stop loving the money, then you won't be so quick to jump down that road or, or you know, do certain things in order to attain it. Yes, so, um, you know, it's... Uh, Okay. That's what I was saying. Yes, sir. And, and I appreciate that. You know, um, I think the brother's name is... Boyce Watson? Dr. Boyce Watson? Yeah. Dr. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And he was talking about uh, Straight Outta Compton, and he was giving his critique on it, and he was very quick about it. The one thing he said um, that was very impactful, he said, because Ice Cube and Dre pulled their resources together, and backed it along with uh, Universal Pictures or Universal uh, engaged that. He said the revenue that came from that particular movie and then their ventures, he said their families, their children and their children's children and their children's children, because now he's starting to talk about wealth, right? He said that should, they should be able to extend that wealth for at least 300 years. Uh, if properly uh, managed, and Brother Scott talks about you know managing uh, economics properly. But I was listening to him, and then he made a reference to our brother Shook, because at one time his record company, especially on the West Coast, and really compared to any of them, was producing probably damn near some of the highest annual revenue, you know, dollar for dollar that you can name. But at this particular point, he sold his masters. Mm. And no longer is he, I think it was up to like four or five hundred thousand that he was making, I mean, four or five hundred million a year wow. that that death row record was making. But he referenced it very quickly saying, well, maybe the brother did not have a full understanding of finances in regards to how to take that and leverage that, you know, three, four, five hundred million and create, you know, a billion out of that. Right. You know, how to leverage that much money. And even if it's not liquid assets, it's the influence that you can have to access to additional resources. That's right. That can also create money. And um, Brother, um, the Honorable Minister Louis Farcon, I heard, you know, he used, uh, let me send a shout out. I heard the minister said, let me send a shout out to uh, our boxing championship and our brother uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. because I think that purse was I think just the purse was somewhere around 200 million yes, sir. Um, now you didn't even get into pay-per-view and all the rest of that 
t-shirts and marketing and oh ooh, who knows where it finishes up at but after that fight uh, the billionaire or probably you know multi-billionaire Warren Buffett yes sir began to befriend him mm. and the minister said you know be careful you know this is a shout out uh, you know to my brother be careful and really you haven't used them before in your avenue to be uh, successful your consistency has brought you to the pinnacle that you have now the resources to really do something powerful yes sir so um my prayer is that our brother being in this position really can start to take that wealth and maximize it and reach back into his community not just to throw money away because that old saying is there's money where in the hood that's right. You know what I mean? That's that old, there's money in the hood. Yeah. You know, you hear that in every little pop culture, you know, hip hop movie, because there's money. But there's money out in Roseville and Folsom and right. in Malibu and out, all over the place. Why should we limit ourselves to any demographics? We should just be wise with our resources. And we have to be taught that. And if we're not, as the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad is saying, this will become one of our four basic problems. Health, finances, domestic affairs, and affairs of the heart. Finances, resources, and money most definitely will cause us to have that top, uh, that type of uh, complication. So let me just ask uh, Brother Scott, um, you know, just to share a bit from his life experience. How how can money become one of those um, four basic problems? And, you know, do you have any testimony of the effects of, you know, finances and how they uh, can create a problem? Uh, <clears throat> yes, to all of the above. <laughs> okay, yes, sir. <laughs> uh, I'd like to start out by concurring with, with, with uh, what Sister Kimberly said, is that finances have the ability to... Uh, impact the other three yes sir uh, and uh, but from a historical perspective okay please. you know I uh, I just uh, I just finished reading a book by uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates Between the World and Me mm -hmm. and it's, it's a, and I was going to suggest it to you because you've got a son yes sir and it's a letter to his son okay I mean it's powerful okay it, nice. yeah, you know, yes sir I'll take that down. yeah and one of the things he says in there is a mountain is not a mountain unless there's something below. That's right. And we mm. are below. Mm. We've always been below. That's right. The way this country was structured mm -hmm. because, you know, was for us to be below. Yeah. Yeah. So in the context of finances, the original wealth produced by this country came up from us. Yes, we sir. were the product, slaves. Mm -hmm. We were the labor and cotton was the product. Mm -hmm. And we, we were also the product because they sold us, That's right. mm -hmm. you know, we were, we were you know, valuable. Yes, right. so, the, yeah, so when you look at the financial structure of the, of the country, and something else he said that really resonated with me, he said, slavery didn't end in 1865. Mm -hmm. Is just mutated, yeah. and 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 no area is it more evident of that mutation than economics. That's right. Because when it comes to finances, we're at the bottom. That's right. You know, yes, and that is not by accident. You know, so understanding uh, and having the proper value of finances. Because to you know, the worst thing you could do is to define yourself by your finances. Right. And sometimes right. we do that. Come on. Because we, as a people, have come from a, an existence where we did not have. Sure. And so when we turned on the TV and saw the white folks driving nice cars and living in big houses, that's what we wanted. And and, and why shouldn't we want it? It's the American dream. But then. When some of us sometimes when we when we acquire it, we forget the folks that That's we right. grew up with. We don't go back to the hood. Mm -hmm. You know, right. we don't. You know, it, it, I, you become I become me, and, and they become them now. 
Right. You know what I'm saying? So uh, finances have the ability to, to really, really uh, make a community or an individual better, but it could also have the opposite effect. That's right. You know, and so my objective has always been to, to first of all understand it. You know, do the do the fundamentals of it to a point where it begins to you know show uh, returns. Yes, sir. Yes. And then hopefully pass that same knowledge on to my children. Yes, sir. You know, my youngest one, he's 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 still challenged. <laughs> 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 you know, I had to talk with him today. Okay. You know. yes, uh, uh, but, but we won't go into that. Oh, no. No, 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 I, no, I'm not going to go into okay, details. No, okay. no, I'm just saying that at the end of the day, unfortunately, we don't live in a country where bartering is is a medium of exchange. So you wouldn't need as much money. You know, but, right. you know, on, America is the way that. it is and it's not going to change. Mm -hmm. So we either got to get you know, in in line and get what's available to us so we can participate in it, I'll get the hell out. Mm. Yes. Yes sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. I like that. Yes, sir. Because there are other countries that function in different uh, parameters in regards to equity that people, really, when they retire, they be trying to get the hell out. Mm -hmm. I'm taking my money. I'm going over here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to retire. I'm taking my money and I'm going over there and I'm going to retire. There's people just really say, hey man, I'm out of here. Yes, sir. You know, uh, it's also important to remember uh, that it's uh, how you get the money is more important than how much money you got, even if it's legit. Because in this capitalistic society, you have people who would have made great teachers, but instead they're doctors because of money. And they're mediocre doctors or mm. bad ones, you know, mm -hmm. just because it's the money. Mm -hmm. And they're unhappy with what they do because they really want to be teachers, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. this, this society is not built to draw out of you the gift that God has given you for the world. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's made for you to chase the dollar. Mm -hmm. and, um, and conversely, you know, Teachers aren't paid as much as ball players. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And these are the ones that are molding the minds of the youth, creating these brand new generations. You right. Know? And yes, moving sir. them along. So uh, understanding what kind of system economically that you're, you're put in and the social effects of that and the ramifications of that is, is as important as how the money moves as well, like Brother Scott said. Right. Right. Brother Maurice, good to see you out this evening, brother. Well, good to see you all. Yes, sir. Any thoughts, brother, since the uh, yeah. since the messenger and the minister basically framed, you know, as a platform for basic problems that really then undergird some of the extensions? And we dealt with health last week and we're dealing with finance. How does finance identify you know, as an individual or within a household or in a community as one of those problems. How does it, you know, raise its head and what problems may it cause so we can really get a good understanding about finances? <clears throat> Ice-T mm -hmm. said in a song that I, I like that he can live on bread and water or on lobster and steak. Mm -hmm. So that means we have to learn how to adapt to whatever situation comes up. Because if you're a true believer in the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, then we know that this world is going to go down. Right. It's a book called Fall of America that details the world going down. So you can keep your job, your 401k, your benefits, or whatever you think you got going on. You think you got that steady to to uh, twice a month check but if you're a true believer we're taught that the world is going to go down and you must have to start to do for yourself so doing for yourself means you have to start to adapt I'm thankful that I've been in certain situations uh, uh, previously in my life where adaption came in 
I've heard you talk about your past too. You've been in situations like that too. Sometimes when the money was good, I'm gonna live a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But when the money was bad, I knew how to go from being at Sizzlers all the time yeah. to uh, putting chili cheese on some Doritos and eating that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. Because, that's, because that's what it, how it really was. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I gotta put some stuff away. I think when dealing with money, you gotta use wisdom. A lot of times, like Brother Scott said, you know, Negroes is really into shiny things and yeah. fancy things. <laughs> and they'll go out and go buy something that's shiny. That's awesome. May not have any real worth to it, but it looks good. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shiny. You know, it, yes, sir. And they go yeah. and get this. Yes, sir. I walked out. I'm here every day now from uh, Monday through Friday. I walked out to the front the other day. There's a barber right here at this shop right here. Mm -hmm. It was a Maserati parked out there. <clears throat> He's standing by the mile right, you know, he made it a point to open the door. You know how when you open the door and put one foot on and be standing on your yeah. phone to, sh to show yes, everybody, yeah. this is you. <laughs> and I was thinking, you know, that's a nice car for a barber. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> mm -hmm. I said, but that's just stuff, eye candy. Right. Where do you live? Because I know people that have nice cars, Maseratis, the newest slant back bins and whatnot, and they written rooms in people's houses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They live in an apartment. They can't really park their car where they stay. Mm -hmm. But they, it's for a show. Mm -hmm. So once we get out of that, that, uh, uh, that Negro mindedness <laughs> yeah. on putting on a show for everybody, mm -hmm. it's not about putting on a show. It's about creating something so that you can pass down to your children, so your family, That's we right. can all eat off this. That's we can right. all suck from this. Right. Not. You know, nobody gets remembered uh, uh, because they had a nice car. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and if it is a, a memory, it's like this. Yeah. If you've seen the movie Straight Outta Compton, you, there was a scene in there when Easy was moving out of the big house. And he had to go to a regular looking house. <laughs> he was like he was in Inglewood. Uh, there was a car parked right in front. And he, he was stressed because it's nothing nothing guaranteed no more. That's right. You know what I mean? Unless you create it for yourself so. and you... You, you're uh, uh, ruling over your finances yourself and you get it on your own. Mm -hmm. These entertainers and these um, sports figures and whatnot, a lot of, you know, a lot of people say, well, so-and-so is not giving back to the community. So-and-so is not giving back to the community. And some people say, well, they made that money. They, they don't gotta give back. But the minister says, you know, they're going to have a couple of trinkets of people that's making this money, yeah. but the condition of your people as a whole shows a condition right. of, all, uh, of us. That's right. So, I mean, if you made $85 million, it's not nothing to give $5 million to invest back in what you're doing. That's this right. is why Dr. Dre, because he got, he got so much slack mm -hmm. on giving to USC, and USC has a history of giving black folks some problems at mm -hmm. that school. That's right. And he gave all that money to USC for a music program, he had to check himself because he constantly back flack on that. And he, he's invested now. All the proceeds is going back into Compton. You know what I'm saying? He's building some stuff up from Compton. And, and the, the agents and the Asian provocateurs and people are sending people at him right now. They, they pulled Michelle A out the cut. And now all of a sudden, a big thing is uh, Dre beats the, 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 the uh, elephant in the room. Dre beat women up. Well, that was, the man was 22, 23 years old. <laughs> Now, if we're talking about 50-something-year-old Dre, he's been married 20-something years. Mm -hmm. Got children, raising his family. So don't, I said, if we took a snapshot of each and every one of us from age 19 to 25, mm -hmm. we'd all have something that can be <laughs> have a, a finger pointed at. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now, like you said about uh, uh, Floyd Mayweather, mm -hmm. now when some of our brothers get this money and they start to do positive things, and reinvest in their community and uplift their community, that's when the Warren Buffett's come out. Right. That's when the accusations of you beat me back in 1987 uh, came out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's when the, all this other stuff come out. You know what I'm saying? And they're going to always try to twist our people, especially those with money, twist them so that we they turn the average Negro mind against them, as they did with Bill Cosby, but you don't hear nothing about subway guy Jared, yeah. and Jared was doing child pornography and humping on babies. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Bill Cosby had an accusation. We got Negroes that just went bad on him. But that's all a play for the money and what he, what he has going. So I want to end it like this. 
it's about adapting and being wise with your money. Don't go out. You know Michael Jordan invest, investing 30 million in private prisons. Yeah. So why would you go buy his tennis shoe for $190 when it only make $15 to make? Mm -hmm. and this Negro don't care nothing about it. I done seen Michael Jordan before face to face and he looked at me like I wasn't nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm, hey, Air Jordan. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why would you do that? And we need to, I think uh, special classes need to be set up, financial planning and whatnot that cater straight to us to get out of that thinking. I worked in a school before and, there, and one of the children said, look at your shoes, you only have the new Jordan 12s on. Yeah. You can't even get them, look what I got. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, I said, silly. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can go buy some Jordan right now, but that that don't make me nothing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's about taking care of a whole and not just that because shoot, I, I did that before. I went out and bought the Jordan 14s. Mm -hmm. Me, Caprice, and Sade had the same pair of blue and white. Mm -hmm. And they were babies, so you know, they grew out of them like that. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I had mine and then they, they, after a, a certain time passed, I would wear them to go take the garbage out. It was old. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I just think you got to be wise in what you do with money and be uh, frugal. Mm. Be uh, uh, have a mindset of uh, non-extravagance. Get what you need. We're always trying to go for what we want. That look nice. If you and I and I tell the, the people I talk to, if you won the lottery or had a lump sum of money, what would you go do? Would you go buy the Bentley and and a house on the hill, or would you would you go? Get something that's viable that's going to bring money back. Would you go open a supermarket in your neighborhood? Would you Would you go to uh, Howard and go get some black doctors? And say I'm going to open up a practice right here. I want y'all to populate this yeah, and do the right. thing. Or would you right. Would you Would you go buy a couple of apartment complexes? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and properties to say you know what? I'm not even going to tell my children my thoughts. I'm not even going to tell my children I have this, but I want to see them work for what they get. And once I, I'm satisfied that they're doing on their own, I can say, you know what? For the past uh, 12 years, that apartment complex, that's yours. It's all your money right there. Yeah, you know, uh -huh. just go collect the rent on there. That's you. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh -huh. And, that, and that's, that's going to stay even after I'm gone. Right. That building's going to stay. This right. building's going to be here after we go. Right. And I think that we need to start thinking like that instead of what the latest is. And I'll tell my daughter that what the, the latest shoe and what you got to get. Because it don't mean nothing. I'm... I've survived on welfare before right. in the in the nineties, right. early nineties. Me, my my daughter's mom, my daughter and her daughter in a one bedroom apartment. I think we were getting three ninety a month, mm -hmm. and we were living pretty good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we we yeah. wasn't hungry. We had all the bills paid yeah. off of uh -huh. three ninety. Right. So if we were doing that on three ninety, and nothing else coming in, so I, I'm able to do it on fifteen hundred a month. I'm able to do it. If I if I can live comfortable on fifteen to uh, nineteen hundred dollars a month, imagine the people that's making seven thousand dollars a month. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I think just from the experience, like Mr. Scott said, if you experienced a certain way of living and you lived for years on nineteen hundred dollars a month, you was living comfortable. You had a car, you had everything. When you start making that seven thousand a month, all that excess should be put away. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because right. I can live on this. Uh -huh. This should be put away. And now I'm stacking something up right here. Mm -hmm. But when it starts to, it's to, them opportunities, you always get them, them once in a li lifetime opportunities. Every time I don't have no money, that's when somebody want to come sell me the, a low rider. For, yeah, I need 500 for this. You know, yeah, I don't got yeah, no money. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the opportunities going to pop up when you got that money and you're going to have something to get something with it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Brother Scott. Yeah. I, I would also... Uh, say that I concur with a lot of what he said. Uh, one of the fundamentals of, 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 of prudent financial management is, number one, you know, like you said, you always live below your means. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And if you are going to spend on things that you say want versus what you need, you, you want to try to in, in, invest in something that's going to appreciate, not yeah. depreciate. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, I mean, uh, a five thousand dollar car will get you to and from work. Come on, take you on that. As well as a twenty five thousand dollar car. Right, right, right. So, right. You know, right. I mean, I've been driving the same car. For, for, see, I bought it in two thousand. 
it was a 91, going into 2000. And I'm still driving the same car. Right. You know, and my, my son, my youngest one, he's had four cars. <laughs> you know, you know, you, you know huh? within that time, you know, within that time, within, well, he's 23, so he's been driving, I think, about 18, you know. So, not expensive cars, but it's just the fact that he doesn't take care of them. Yes, sir. And so you got you got to take care of the stuff, you know. And, and any you know, I see people probably walking down the street with, like you said, Jordans on, a cell phone, but they probably don't have a hundred dollars in a savings account. That's right. But they look good. Yeah. You know. See, we get caught up in the symbols of wealth, right? Rather right. than the substance of wealth. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know. So, and you know, like I said, you know, who else in this country deserves to look good? Any more than us. Right. Mm -hmm. If anybody deserves to have all the fine material things as us, it's hell. We made it possible for the ones who got it That's to right. have it. That's Come on. Right. We were deceived. Yes, sir. You know? Yes, sir. So I, I don't blame our, our people for wanting it, mm -hmm. but we, we we sell ourselves short when we when we seek that instant gratification. Right. And that That's glitter. Cool. We don't have the patience to, to think long term. Right. We want it right now. And, and that's a difficult thing to come back. Mm -hmm. But anything that's built methodically and, and carefully, systematically, is, systematically is, yeah. is, is more likely to endure than something just quickly thrown together. Right. And, and, and the accumulation of wealth mm -hmm. is one of those processes where you have to take it Good. step by step by step by step. Good teaching. I got Brother Teddy, then Brother Maurice. Yes. Let me ask Brother Teddy just to follow up on yes, this. Sir. He said that the messenger and the minister jumped right in our head. <laughs> he said, Master Fra Muhammad came to give us. You remember what he said? Master Fra Muhammad came to give us money, good on, luxury, friendships, and all walks of life. Yes. Yes, sir. <laughs> so those things, as Brother Scott was saying, that made me reflect upon that was what was promised to us to take us out of the condition that we were in and that we were um, suffering up underneath. If anybody should be able to extract the resources and live in a certain quality, with a certain quality of life, mm -hmm. we should. And we've been given the tools to do that. We need to execute that. Mm -hmm. Money, luxury, friendship, good home, yes, sir. all walks of life. Yes, sir. You know, uh, with the luxury part, I had this come up before. It's not necessarily like, you know, I'm going to have a panda skin suit. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, it, it's more like I have the luxury to say no. Mm, I don't, like don't want to take this job. That's mm. a luxury. Mm. You know, I don't want to go to work today. Mm -hmm. That's a luxury. I want to spend time with my kids. Mm -hmm. That's a luxury to do that. You know, It's a luxury to be able to, uh, you know, get your wife something. Come on. You know, something nice. Just cause, mm -hmm. that's a luxury. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is the type of luxury that others can afford. We need to be able to afford that. You know? Yes, sir. So it's not just the money, the money is all type of stuff, but the luxury okay. with the money, you know? You got people who uh, you got p people who make tons of money, right. got oodles of money, and don't have the luxury to say what I, I say any day of the week, mm. any time, and I ain't got no money. <laughs> you, know I mean? right. you know what I mean? You got people who have who have a lot of the things that we look to as uh, symbols of freedom or you know uh, capabilities of being free, but are are slaves. They don't have the luxuries we got. Yes. You know, so just just to touch on that, but I was going to add to what Brother uh, Maurice said. You know, Tyreek Evans. Uh, as far as as far as our our uh, celebrities and, and you know sports figures, not understanding that they have to work with us to mm. change us on, you know teacher. and improve upon us Tyreek Evans was at Arden Mall one time and even though he a ball player played for the Sacramento Kings his boy was there with a hoodie and they told him to leave they told Tyreek Evans and his boy to leave he was liable to spend 20 30 grand just on a win you know just cuz he mm. feel like it he go what's he going to the mall for Right, <laughs> you know, but just because he wearing a hoodie, I mean, obviously, obviously, it's not just a hoodie. You know, there's probably other people who could have worn hoodies or were wearing hoodies at that time. You know, mm -hmm. but because he was black, his boy was black, they told him he, he got to go. 
Mm -hmm. It didn't matter what money he made. It doesn't matter what his paycheck was, or if he's on ESPN, the Sports Center, all day. It don't matter to nobody. You still, you still a Negro. That's what I mean. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. No matter. We look. Poor whites is here, right? Rich black folks is up under that. (laughs) (laughs) Rich black folks is up under that. You know what I mean? Then it's the white folks. Poor whites, and it go from there. You know. So we gotta understand, man. There's no amount of money you can make that could ever grant you acceptance into Master's Kingdom or Master's, you know, pedestal or anything like that. Mm-hmm. You know, another thing is that um, as as black folks, in order for us to really come up, each one of us has to have a business or be a part of a black business. Mm-hmm. It's got to be like that. You know? Right. You can't have the money, the little money we do got circulating amongst us if you can't give me what I need mm. then I gotta go to the Asians mm. I gotta go to the Mexicans mm. I gotta go to white folks I can't get none from you mm. how am I gonna put the money in your pocket mm. you know? it, it can't be a charity thing because eventually I'm gonna run out mm. <laughs> I'm not gonna have what I could give you you know what I mean it's right. gotta be an exchange I'm, I gotta be able to get from you what I could get from other people mm. or need to get yes. you know so uh we got to have a business, and then we got to support our own our own businesses. Everybody says that, and I know it's like simple, but it's even down to the little brother who's selling candy bars yeah. so he could get a football jersey, you know, to play yeah. football this season. Mm-hmm. It's even down to that. You see a brother, and I don't care who it is, if they doing something for self. You got to support it. Give him what you got. Even if you don't want to take the product, mm-hmm. put the money in his pocket. Because the next thing he's going to do is be in your house. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Straight up. The next thing he's going to do is be selling your daughter. Mm-hmm. Huh? Mm-hmm. Convincing your daughter to go out on the stroll mm-hmm. and on the blade mm-hmm. huh? so he could get paid. Because mm-hmm. nobody was supporting him. The next thing he's going to do is be pushing to your high school teenager. The next latest craze. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Heroin, Oxycontin, Molly, whatever. Whatever you want to talk about. Right. But that's what they're going to do because we aren't supporting what they were doing mm-hmm. in order to make a living. Right. You know what I mean? And that's what we got to do. You know, just plain and simple. But if we do those things, I feel like finances won't be such a, a problem for us. Yes, <laughs> when it starts to add balance to everybody's reality, everybody's reality is different. You know, my reality in my household may be a little bit different than Brother Steve's reality in his household. Mm -hmm. You know, Brother Steve's reality may be different than Brother Scott's reality. So on and so forth. So when we start to balance our own realities, then it starts to stabilize as a whole, which is what you're saying. Yes, sir. It starts to stabilize as a whole. I don't have to live in the same household as Brother Maurice up on the hill. Because heaven is a state of mind. That's right. And the brother was saying that some of our athletes, with all of this wealth that they acquire, or some of these Europeans, um, with all the wealth they acquire, they sit there and they'll drink themselves to sleep. Mm. Or drink themselves to death. Oh, this person. Or pill themselves to death. And they get all the money that you think is going to make you happy. That's right. Or make them happy. Or they sit back in their office. And they think about the wealth that they've acquired, but how it's not brought them any peace. That's right. And I'm poor, and I'm happy. Yeah. You'll (laughs) never see me in here be mean. Uh Uh-huh. Be angry. No, Uh sir. How you day go? This is the best part of my day, brother, right here. I always come like this. This is the best part of my day. And I don't have the wealth they have. And they take that pistol, and they cock it, Mm -hmm. Uh and they put it right into the back. And they pull that trigger. So... Understanding that the finances and our support of one another, each one teach one, begins to stabilize our own realities. We have to be able to work towards stabilizing the little brother selling the candy bar, my brother doing lawn and horticulture, my brother doing a little computer service on the side, so he's trying to free himself, my investment, my sister with hers, Whatever that it is, and it starts to stabilize each of us. Yes, and we become healthy mentally, spiritually, and physically. That's right. Brother Maurice. Please. Yeah, real quick, I was going off of what Brother Scott said. I told my uh, my oldest son, 
he wanted to Jordans and he wanted to the latest to want to shoot that was out at the time. And I was like, man, do you play pro sports or something? You know, I had to ask him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, yeah, I believe you. pro sport? That's a pro athlete shoe. Now I just want to know, what you going to walk in the mall professionally with it? I don't know what you're going to do. But I, I told him, I said, here, I, I got $100 for you. And I just gave him 100 Yes, sir. Because he wanted to it was 190 I think it was Penny Hardaway or something. Oh, my the goodness. The ugly shoes. <laughs> so I said, here, here's $100. And I said, you got a choice. And he was younger then. He's 23 now. I said, you can go buy them $100 shoes and be broke. Or you can buy some shoes for $40, $50 and have $50 in your pocket. That's right. I said, I'm out of them. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So and, and, and that way, that's when you start building that into your children. You know what I'm saying? Because you can be, hey, I, mean, I see a lot of people. I used to be on the bus. I see a lot of people with the iPhone or what iPhones wasn't out back then, but the, mm-hmm. but the new Bravo Plus pager. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> the, the white one, you know, mm-hmm. the color with the, the leather case with the uh, gold chain yes, on it. Mm-hmm. It had the newest kicks on, but you was on the bus with me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so and I just, you know, you just got to think about it. I'd rather have fifty dollars and have me some uh, some, some regular old nights on. Yeah, yeah, I agree, <laughs> brother Tim. You know, one thing we gotta teach our our youth is that the white man, it, the white man is selling to your son as a teenager right. the same exact shoes he sold to me as a teenager. That was the same exact shoes that was sold to the brother a generation above me right. when he was a teenager. Right. The same J's. The right. same Air Forces, the same Air Max, the same Penny Hardaways. I was rocking those, and like when I was twelve, I was right. rocking the same ones that they selling right, right now. Right. We're and retro. Then, yeah, we're retro. <laughs> and the shell top Adidas. Can't can't forget that. Right. And Timberlands and all that. You know, mm-hmm. it's nothing new. This is old. Matter yeah. of fact, you know, Repacking it ain't the latest nothing. Yeah, you right. know what I mean. And so, and it's kept its retail value. Right. Over the years, it's just a trick. Put on the right person. That's right. You know. Uh, <laughs> Let me turn this. We're about to close out. We're about ten minutes or so, and I'm wondering if I should hold it or at least open it up a little bit. Um, let me just find out before I turn it just a little bit. Sister Kim, any thoughts in regards to what you, you know, just been processing, what you've been digesting? Any thoughts about what you what you've heard, sis? Um. I mean, I can agree with everyone, uh, starting with uh, Brother Scott. I just converted a term life policy to a whole life policy mm-hmm. where in 25 years, God don't say anything different, I'm still alive. I'll have like $80,000 in that policy versus you know, uh, worrying if I die today. You know, my children have three, got $250,000 policy is going to be split, but you know, they be trying to kill each other. So mm-hmm. my youngest, mm-hmm. uh, who's going to get what? Mm-hmm. And if I live, once that policy's over, I don't have nothing. Oh. I have to start all over again. Right. So that was something that I did for myself, but it's not just for me. It's for whoever, it's my grandchildren. That's what I'm thinking about because their parents are, they're grown. So whatever decision that they make, that's on them. I'm not worried about them. Um, and just all the way around the room, I, I never bought Jordans for my, my adult children. And they hated me for that. We would go to Famous Footwear was out then. That's before the outlets came out. Right, right. And Or we'd go to Southern California and hit different stores, but um, now, in their mid and late 20s, they're just now saying, you know what? I didn't understand the reason why you did it. You you know, you take us somewhere, and we come out of there with four or five pairs of shoes. Yes, ma'am. A piece, mm-hmm. and you would spend less than two hundred dollars. Right. Oh, twenty dollars? Oh, that's too much. You look <laughs> over there, yeah, and it would always be like these shoes are ugly, whatever. No, because then when you would sport them, somebody would be like, "Oh, them is tight. Where you get them at?" Oh man, look, they. I ain't gonna tell you how much they cost because they'd be embarrassed. Fourteen ninety nine, and this is an eighty nine dollar shoe. Mm-hmm. You gotta learn how to stretch your money. That's right. And you're growing. Um. And then bartering, oh my goodness, 
Mm. Being a businesswoman almost 20 years, I've tried to barter, especially with hard people. That's the first people I barter with. Don't they don't hold up the end of the bargain? They don't. Uh, you know, I, I gotta chase them down and try to find them. And you know, I don't play when it comes to business, so I know what I, is expected of me. So then you should know what's expected of you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when I visited Georgia last year, there was a young man. Uh, my friend that I was visiting, we met at a gas station close to her uh, shop. And that is one thing that I can say about Atlanta and the surrounding areas. You can say, you know, I, I have a, a new Lys- a Lysol type like Somebody going to buy it. Somebody's going to take that idea. Brother, you know, Brother Kenyatta, that's your idea. We're getting ready to go patent this. We're getting ready to go see what we can do with this. People are willing to invest in other people. It doesn't matter how silly or small the idea may be. You know, it's like uh, if, if you can believe it, we're going to achieve it. Yes, and uh, there was a young man, and I'm done. There was a young man who had walked up to me, and I was uh, my, I was waiting on my friend. And before I could say anything, she says, patronize him. So he had uh, a box similar to that. And it was full of different buttons. And you know buttons back in Cindy Lauper, 80s, whatever. Each button had a, a different phrase on it. Like the one I purchased said like, live, love, laugh. Um, and I asked him what was it for. He gave me a whole sales pitch. Mm. He said that he had been doing this for the last, he was graduating from high school last year. He had been doing it since he was 13. Mm. He went from different business to different business and sold them to whoever he could sell them to there were a dollar a piece I think he told me my I asked him how much it cost 10 15 cents a piece mm-hmm. and uh, nice he was more. taking that money putting it in an account so when he got ready to go to college mm-hmm. his parents would not have to help him and I think he told me I mean he, he had close to like twenty five thousand okay. dollars but I gave him, you know, I just gave him like 10 bucks. I took maybe two pins, but my friend told me, she says he's been doing that like five or six years. Mm-hmm. And she says, I would rather give him a dollar than somebody standing on the corner with a sign saying mm-hmm. we'll work for food because right. you really don't want to work for food. Yeah, you, work you want me to give you some money so you can do whatever it is. So it's a... Uh, you know, it's hard to patronize people, especially when you already see them walk off with your money and go do something else. Hmm. And to try to keep the black dollar with the, with within the community, right. it's hard because everybody is going in a different direction. Even when it's a group of people that say they're together, there's always some in the bunch that's doing their own thing. Yeah. So when you patronize that particular group you who, who are you really helping and and what are, what is where is your money really going because five different people going five different directions mm-hmm. when it's supposed to be one cause that's right thank you so much sister Kim. <laughs> um we're taught to be in time, on time, right down to modern time. And really, there's a, a uh, second half to this finance uh, that I want to try and take a look at. And maybe we'll pick back up on it on uh, Thursday. Because now that we've identified the problems that are created from that, that the messenger and the minister basically pointed out, hey, here are the four problems and finance being one, and we've identified what those problems are and how they affect us. Now we need to really start to talk about the solutions, and we started to get into that, you know, right at the tail end, of, you know, ten before um, stabilizing each as individual, supporting where we need to support with. We really need to start to look at how do we then be the counterbalance to the financial uh, pressure that the system places on us. What is the counterbalance? We have to have a countermeasure 
to the system that these Europeans have put in place. We have to have a countermeasure to it. Yes, and our countermeasure is peace of mind. My grandfather, may a lot be pleased with him. Um, my father is like real tall. My mom is like real short, right? Speak a little louder, brother. <laughs> my father, Shahid, is real tall, right? Uh, my mother, Shahida, is real short, so hey, got my dad's heart, my mom's size, right? Or bigger size. My yes, grandfather sir. is, um, on my mother's side, is also tall. But he was a very humble and meek man. Very humble, very meek type of individual. Yes, sir. Talked real calmly, um, had a little garden, you know, had his little house, and, you know, the community would come by and he'd pick his um, hot peppers and tomatoes and you know he had his little farm you know the minister talks about you know getting extracting what we really need from the land yes sir you know, everything that we need is right there actually in the earth yes, we sir. stopped doing that though and they continued where we left off at you know um, but I say that to say that when my grandfather expired with no complaints. Mm. He lived a very humble quality of life that was satisfactory to him. Mm. And he didn't have a big car. He didn't have a Maserati. He didn't have any of that. He had a couple little dogs. Everybody's grandpa, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> a couple little dogs, some chickens running around, and you know, a little tomato and hot peppers in the front. But he was happy all the way until he was called back on to the Creator. Yes, sir. And that was peaceful for him. And I can see that peace as I mature. That if my quality of life is not designated, which I'm going to recap some of the uh, higher truths that we talked about, but it is not designated, designated based upon the word. And it was said, do not let the word define you. You know, make sure that our education maybe frees us. You know, take that. And that's a uh, education not just based upon the Europeans, but an education based upon um, the whole world aspect, the creator aspect. It makes you uh, see yourself as a god again mm -hmm. versus a Negro, yes, sir. you know, in regards to that. Um, let money be your wisdom. Use money as wisdom, Brother Maurice has said that. Be wise with your money. Mm -hmm. And you can take that money and be a great uh, steward in your community or just within your family yes, sir. being wise with your money. You can make $20,000, $30,000 with wise choices make you be the most brilliant one in your family and they make it sixty dollars and $70,000. Yes, sir. But they're struggling paycheck to paycheck with that. But you make your 30000 look very comfortable. Hmm. I got my A to B car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you struggle with that $30,000 car that you got over there. I'm going to go ahead and drive this Honda Accord that's water and gas and <laughs> give me everywhere I need to go. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. So you put that $70,000 flat screen up there. I mean, $70,000. 70 70 is flat screen. Yeah, just 40 you do just fine. You know what yes, I mean? Yes, sir. And now I have a quality of life that's very comfortable and I'm not stressed out about my resources. Also, we talked about um, money having the effect or finances having the effect if it isn't balanced and levied properly to affect then all of the rest and then that creates our cornerstone. I think Sister Kimberly started off with that. So not having your finances balanced properly then getting that proper health care or either going holistic with our brother or sister that understands the earth but you can't barter with her to get what you need instead of popping the pill you're still having a problem so um, there's a lot that the finances affects us I think when we come back on Thursday let's talk about the solutions and they don't have to be huge steps they're small steps that all we have to do is take a small step forward and that's still motion. You're still making momentum. Just be able to 
uh, they say the race is not through the swift, it's to the one that can what? Endure. Endure to the end. So just make it a long-term goal and you'll get there. 25 years, Sister Kimberly and me, we're going to take that twenty, uh, that $80,000 <laughs> and boy, we going out. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a long-term vision. She saw it mm -hmm. and said, hey, eat right, stay healthy. May the Creator be pleased with me. In 25 years, then I'll have this to actually sit back and add to my retirement. Mm -hmm. You know, my my age, my, my golden age. I can do that if I am disciplined enough. Yes. So we need to, on Thursday, talk about that discipline because that's really how we're going to get there. You know, European dangles that uh, carried over our face, right in our face, and we want it overnight. And that's the way they teach us, and yes, that's sir. the way they train us. Yes, sir. And there were a few things if um, you can go online and take a look at the uh, Willie Lynch, you know, syndrome or uh, his, you know, mental. Uh, man, I really want to give him a good, you know, his mental corruption upon us. But a couple of things they never allowed us to do is the art of mating, and the understanding of finances and resources. They never would teach us that. Yes, how to read, how to write, the art of mating, and finances and resources. Uh, the minister speaks on that also. But that's one of the things that Europeans would never teach us, how to do properly, because it would begin to set us free. Yes, okay? So with that being the case, um, I want to thank everybody for coming out on their Tuesday night class. Did you all enjoy yourself? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Man, I'm, I'm the one that's gained the most. I thank you all for the highest truth that you were able to share. Uh, this is the best part of my day. I'm smiling profusely <laughs> because I have more tools that I can take home and I can utilize and put right into my household. And we pray that you do also. Thank you so much.